Good morning. It's Friday of the fifth week of Easter. Today I'm in the closet of Bridget's office, and today we're going to do something really different. I'm going to be the cameraman because the camera person is who we're going to interview today, Bridget Hackman. So let's start first with our reading for today, the Gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what their master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything that I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. Being one, being friends, love, is something we all need, especially at this time in our lives. And one of the great things that we have in the parish staff is the sense of camaraderie, the sense of love, the sense of being friends. And I think that's what unites us, especially in this time, that we're not going through this alone. It gets tough, especially for someone like myself who is alone, but it's even tougher when you have a large group of people in one place, at home, on top of each other. And I'll let Bridget talk about that. So now I'm going to turn the table, or at least the camera, onto Bridget. And here we go. I hope. <laughs> Bridget, you don't know how scared I am right now. Because <laughs> you're always the one on this side. And now the tables have turned. I have to say thank you on behalf of every parishioner, people who are not even parishioners, who, but who tune in to our uh, YouTube channel and to the website. Because if it wasn't for you, we could not be doing what we are doing right now. Thank you for your talent, You're your Thank generosity. You. Thank you. So, what are you doing, or what have you been doing in this quarantining? So, my quarantine has been quite different than everyone else's. <laughs> I moved. I moved from Three Bridges, uh to Pennsylvania with my four children and my husband Tom, and two cats uh, into a new home. So it has been crazy, 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 but good, good, crazy. And now we're there and it's, it's beautiful. So I'm glad it's over. And everybody's alive. Yes. Everyone's still breathing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. We have to add into that. One's working from home and two are going to school. So in the midst of all that. Yes. Uh, the two are going to be graduating from Hunterdon and Central. Correct. One going to? Uh, the University of Pittsburgh, Greensburg, and my daughter will be going to East Stroudsburg University. So, Hence the move to Pennsylvania. Yes. <laughs> so really, it has been almost normal in many ways. Right, right. Just that everyone's home. Even Which, out of house and home. And that's something a lot of people have said, that it ha is very hard with the family being home because there's only a few things you can do, and one of them being eating. Correct. Correct. And with a two very manly men, meaning your son and your husband, that's a lot of food right there. True. However, my husband's essential, so he has been working this entire time which is different than most people who have their husbands at home. Right, exactly. That, that helps a it lot. It does, it does. So, what have you been doing spiritually? 
for during this time for yourself? So this time for me has changed tremendously. So I now spend an awful lot of time with you, which I don't usually have that opportunity. Um, I'm usually in front of a computer screen, whereas now I'm taping mass and I'm taping five minutes with Father Len and I'm bringing in videos from Deacon Chuck. So I think probably spiritually I'm more nourished now than I was prior to all of this. So it's been exciting. It's, I'm being able to delve into parts of um, my job that I don't always get the opportunity to do so. And we're actually recognizing your talents that, well, we, you know maybe you've had, but didn't realize to the extent that you had. Right. And now I have to use them. And I had to use them immediately. And if you've watched a lot of the tapings, the ones in the beginning were a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> As we joke, if only we kept a bloopers reel. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Some people would be very appalled by some of the things that have happened. Very funny. And some of the things that have been said. No, oh, and of course, not by me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine who that might be. No, no. <laughs> so, what has it been like here without people? Because you're really, you know, you're just like Doreen and Christine. You are a person that deals with the public. Yes. It, it's definitely changed a lot. Um, we always felt like, Doreen and Christine and I, that we are here for the parishioners. We minister to the parishioners. So sometimes you could be in the middle of a task in your office and someone comes in who lost their husband or is hungry, believe it or not, or is we've had people that were traveling across the country and stopped by to talk to us as you know, the, the things that go on behind um, in our office are crazy. So we would stop everything and we would go and we would talk and, and just hope that we helped people that's, that's gone. So we, that you miss that a lot. You miss that because I think that's why we're all here. I want you to address something for me, and that is sacraments. You deal with baptism. You assist me with uh, preparing th certain things for uh, weddings. And, of course, cup coming would have, well, actually, would have been already First Communion. How is that affecting you and what you're looking forward to in the next months so my pre bap class, which would have happened at the end of March, was canceled. I had several baptisms that had to be canceled. So we know that we need to prepare uh, parents to baptize their children for when the pandemic is over. Baptism will look different, uh, but it's still going to happen. So we're going to be working on doing an online baptism class. Uh, with me and what I usually teach in the hour that I spend with uh, new parents. Uh, so that will be great in the fact that we can still get parents prepared um, because they want to have their babies baptized. They're waiting patiently. Uh, and I think that they'll feel at ease once they know that they're ready. Great. One final question, and this is really a selfish question on my part. Are you feeling like a family here at this church with the staff? Well, it's funny that the reading that you did today, and then you said that we are all friends. That is absolutely the truth. These are my best friends. We talk, we laugh. I am glad to have been quarantined with them because I enjoy their company. And we're very, very lucky in that respect. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for the staff this week who has given unconditionally of themselves. And Bridget, what do I do now? You just press the red button. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have a great day today.